Hello, and welcome to Take a Food's Advice, the podcast I started with my late brother, Sean Swanson. And we just discuss topics and things um, that deal with real life. So today I want to discuss, I think I'm going to make a series of this discussing um, drugs and addiction, just addiction, not just drug addiction, but any addiction that you may have. And um, that's from drug, alcohol, sugar, whatever that may be, but uh, mainly substance abuse, because I believe that so many families is affected by it. Um, Not so many, I believe that every family is affected by some type of drug or chemical dependency, whether it be um, drug, alcohol, prescription, medication, whatever it may be. I believe that every family is some way affected, whether it's them being the user or the family members and the loved ones, because believe it or not, it is a hurtful thing for everyone involved, whether you're the one um, uh, using the drugs or you're watching your loved ones slowly um, go into this place and and into this personality that you no longer recognize. So I think this is going to be a good series and and I'm going to try to have some guests sometimes to come on and, and speak and give us their perspective, not only as a family member or someone that on drugs currently, or maybe um, they overcame the, the addiction, or maybe they're in the process of overcoming the a- addiction. And I really wanted to do this because so often we uh, people, they label drug addicts or alcoholics as um, weak people because I've even heard it myself. Uh, people said, um, I, can, I can do drugs because only the weak minded get addicted, which is not true because it's truly a chemical change in your brain that's happening when you're doing drugs. And no, I'm not a healthcare professional. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse, but um, I I can study. I can research. I can look online. I can look in books and, and so can you. So uh, we can learn from doctors and nurses and professional um, healthcare people. So we, I think that Instead of looking at it as a sickness, nobody wants to be there. Nobody wants to do that. It's hurtful. And uh, me, myself, having people in my family uh, that's been addicted is devastating. It hurts your heart. And it hurts them and to, to see them cry out and, and, and don't want to be in that place of drug addiction, yet don't know how to uh, let it go because it changes chemicals in the brain. And and um, when you're really addicted, you, they can get sick. Um, I've heard it's like they can have flu-like symptoms, pain. So no, it's not just, it's not for the weak or something's wrong with them or it just happens. I can try drugs today and just that one time me trying it, I can become addicted from that. So I think that we all should have a little more empathy. And hopefully these uh, podcasts that I'm going to do on the series of drugs will help uh, not only the ones that are addicted to drugs, but the family members um, give us more empathy and uh, wisdom in trying to be there for our loved one, yet not to enable our loved ones and not to become codependent and to uh, show love without um, increasing their addiction or um, hampering or stunting their recovery. It's, it's, (laughs) It's a hard, it's a hard thing to deal with and 
to even know. I don't know if anyone really knows how to really help because um, from my reading, I hear that addiction is a lifelong struggle. So, you know, addiction, they can get, they can recover, but they, they have to know, and you have to know that it's lifelong. It's lifelong uh, because any minute they can relapse. You can relapse and, and uh, relapse is devastating. It's, it's hard, and but it's not that you fail. It's a known fact that most drug addicts, once they recover a lot, <laughs> that they may have a relapse. And some don't, which is great. Um, me being, uh, believing in the power of the Holy Spirit, um, I believe that there's nothing too hard. I know there's nothing too hard for God. And sometimes relying on yourself or others to help you, and it just never seems to work out. Sometimes you just got to give it all to God and let him deliver. Because once he's delivered you, then you don't have to worry about relapse if you continue to put your hand in the man that can, you know. And that given that I'm thinking about uh something my husband told me about a friend of his that was uh addicted. He I think he shot up and he said he was all he was gone and he would go to these um houses where they got high. And um, he would just spin up all his check and just stay there until his money was gone, shooting up. And the last time he shot up, he didn't, he did it. He said it. He said, God, this is my last time. I don't want to do this no more. He didn't, he didn't stop that, that moment because he said he was still going to shoot up. He said, but after this, after this one, God, please deliver me. I don't even want the taste of it. And that was many, many years ago. And God delivered him. And he's never wanted the taste of it again. So God can and will if you want him to, you know. But that's a whole different topic. But most of the, the studying I've been doing, I got off a website. It, it's called... Um, it's, NIDA, N-I-D-A, N-I-H dot uh, gov. And so that's a good, that's a good resource to go to to get information um, about addiction. And it really helped me and it's helping me because I'm learning along the way. And, you know, oftentimes, uh, when our loved ones come to us, we are like, they must think I'm stupid. Because they come, they come to you and you know it's a lie and you know they only want money for more drugs. And and you're like, is he crazy? Is she crazy? They must think I'm a fool. And you think and they playing games with you, but the, it, it changes the whole way that they think and they're not playing games with you. They're kind of not in reality. They're somewhere else. And um, I looked up something. It's mind matters, drugs, and the brain. And it was really interesting to me, but it just, um, it was talking about the brain and how drugs affects the brain. And I'm just going to read a little of it. Um, our body has special cells called neurons that carry messages back and forth between the brain and other parts of the body. The neurons send messages to each other by releasing chemical substances called neurotransmitters into the gaps between cells. These gaps are called synapses. And so then it just gives the... Uh, parts of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, the uh, extended amygdala. How you say that? Amygdala. And the uh, basal ganglia. So all these parts of the brain, it tells how drugs affects them. And the basal ganglia 
it's in the center of the brain. And it said this part of the brain that motivates us to do healthy activities like eating or hanging with friends, drugs flow into that area of the brain and cause people to feel really, really happy. You know, they feel happier than usual once the drug reach that part of the brain. And that's the middle part, the basal ganglia. But if you use a lot of drugs, the basal ganglia can get used to have the get used to having the drug around and make it hard to feel pleasure from anything else but the drug. So once once it hit that part of the brain and you continue to do it pretty soon um drug addicts feel no other happiness or joy except from that drug because it's a brain thing i say it's kind of like brain damage it is it is something that you can't control people say they can control the drug but you can't because it's entering the brain and it's causing um, damage and some of that damage cannot be repaired. And so then the extended amygdala is what makes it, and it's connected to the basal ganglia, is what makes you feel stressed out or cranky. When people use drugs, this part of the brain gets very sensitive. Have you have you noticed how if you're around some um, drug addicts? If they don't, or addicts, period, if they don't have whatever their uh, drug of choice is, um, a lot of times they're just laying around or they're just very impatient or, or, or small things uh, bother them. Very impatient, very irritated, and, and not just a happy-go-lucky person, if that's who they is. They, their whole attitude to changes. And it says when your body is used to the drug and you stop the extended amygdala makes you feel really sick. So people will use drugs again just to get rid of that feeling. So um, they are irritated and cranky because if they don't have that drug, which that brain part is used to, it makes them feel sick because now the brain is needing that. And how many of us know, even in the, in the Bible, the head, like the husband's supposed to be the head. And if the head is out of place, everything is out of place. And even in the physical, if your head is out of place, out of order, your thoughts, or, or you're having um, mental issues, it can wreck your whole life. Or you got a headache, you just want to lay down. Uh, migraine, migraine correct your, your sight and everything else. So that's what it does to that part of the brain. And then your the the prefrontal cortex, the the front of your brain, helps you think, make decisions. That's why you know sometimes they they, they don't. It seems like they're not thinking right or making the best decisions. Like um, parents. And raising kids when they're um, addicts and some of the decisions they make, it makes you so angry and so mad. Um, and we are thinking it's them, but it's their brain. Their brain is not working properly because of what is being put in it. And we can do that, go back to sugar, because um, quite honestly, yes, sugar is an addiction and I would be one to say that I'm addicted to sugar. And so um, if I'm trying to kick the habit of cakes and cookies and pies, then yes, I will go to like a low place. Like my energy is gone because that sugar, it boosts me up. You know what I'm saying? It, it gives me energy. Um, I can even get headaches. Um all, real, real bad cravings. And if I let into that craving, then I overdo it. And it's the same thing. Uh, helps, okay, helps you to think, make decisions, and control your actions. See, with that addiction to sugar, if I don't have it, and then if I give into them cravings, I don't control myself. I'm out of control. So instead of uh, a small uh, bowl of banana pudding, I might eat two or three bowls of banana pudding. 
and I know it's not good for me. And then afterwards, how am I feeling? I'm feeling bad, depressed. Uh, I blew it again. And that's how the drug addict is or the alcoholic is. Um, it's like that craving takes over and then they do it. They overindulge. And, and sometimes when they're overindulge, they neglect their children. They don't get their bills paid. But guess what? Once that drug wore off, you feel bad. When someone uses drugs, this part of the brain becomes less able to make good judgments or to or step in to say no to a harmful impulse. So they, lo they lose the ability not to give in to that impulse. And without help, it just gets worse. Uh, without deliverance, it just gets worse. And it says also some drugs affect other parts of the brain, like the brain stem. The brain stem controls heart rate and breathing. When a person takes certain drugs like opioids, their breathing can become dangerously low. When the breathing stops, it's called an overdose and can cause death. And that's something too. Um, it is, and that's why I want to do these drugs. Uh, talk about addiction too, because it's more overdosing on that fentanyl has become a pandemic. You know, and it's all over the world, all races, all nationalities, all income brackets. It's 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 not a respecter of person, and it's taking people out. It's taking young out, old out. It's taking a lot of people out and you see them, you see some of them on the street and, and they, you, you wonder how did they get that way to not care? And, and we say not care, but it's not that they don't care. It's all this brain damage that is happening. Things going on in their brain and now their body is dependent on that drug. Some people can't even get up and, and, and function properly without it and not only that if it's doing that to your brain can you imagine the the damages that it's causing to their bodies um it, so it is a pandemic that's what because it, it's everywhere it's 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 no one is exempt no family is exempt and the thing too about that is that um we label drug addicts as they must have came from a bad family or they must have been um, abused in some type of way. There's um, there's preachers, pastors, doctors, lawyers uh, addicted to substances. So no, that's not it. And, and it becomes an embarrassment. So no one gets help. Not only is it an embarrassment from for the person that's addicted, they try to hide it for the, as long as they can. And the world around them can know that they're addicted to drugs and they still won't admit it. That's why you can't make people go get help until they are ready to go get help and they are tired and that they admit that they do have a problem and that they want help um, or they cry out to God and he deliver them on the spot. God to do it right now today. You're never too lost for God. You're never too gone for God. Uh, and there's nothing that God can't do. He can deliver us from anything there is in the world. So, uh, yeah, drugs and, and this overdosing thing, uh, we have to be aware. Um, I can't think of the, the shot that they're giving suspected overdose victims now that a lot of times it saves their lives. Um, but if you, if you, um, are around people or you have family members that do drugs, I just beg you and suggest to you that if you think that they're overdosing, get help immediately, call the ambulance immediately and do not be shamed or scared or fearful that because you say that uh, they've overdosed and they ask you what type of drug or whatever, don't be afraid of the consequences. If you want that person to be around, if you want that person to live, get them help as soon as possible. 
it will save their life. It may save their life. And some, and we're going to talk about some of the uh, symptoms, how they, they look when they're overdosing, because they a lot of times they just don't uh, get high and then just overdose right now. A lot of times they're walking around talking, but they're slurred, they're slow, they're stumbling. And you might think that they're going to be okay and they just need to walk it off or sleep it off. No, they're dying. That's what is happening. They are dying right in front of your eyes. Get them help. So that will be this part of the um, of the series that I'm going to do on addiction. But there is so much, so much more. I was reading, and I mean, it's so much. And then, you know, uh, just thinking about overdose, I think of Whitney Houston, you know, people, DMX, people that had, we think it's all, um, what was the guy, the actor, Michael, can't think of his name, but he played in The Wire, but nobody even knew he was addicted, you know, so it's, it's rough, and, and it leaves families devastated, you know, and wondering what could they have done when actually there's nothing you can do. Um, but I'm going to try to have people on here. That's just my opinion, but I'm just going to have people on here to tell us maybe, you know, it is something we can do. I don't know. Actually, in real life, I don't know, but maybe um, we can learn together. We can learn together. We can heal together. We can help one another. Um, so that is this episode of Take a Food's Advice, and I thank you for joining. Please like and subscribe. Um, more is coming, and I would like to say shalom in, in the words of my dear brother. May he um, rest and enjoy um, where he's at in eternity. He was a believer in Christ and um, the word said those who believe in Christ um, shall never die. And so when we've been fighting the fight on, in, on this side of the world, on this side of eternity, and then when we get to heaven, we get what we need. If we need rest, we get that rest. If we need joy, we get that joy. So um, stay tuned. God bless. Peace.